While Donald Trump was still president, a news person said that he had a bully pulpit. Given the context and being interested in linguistics and etymology, I wondered if they were using the term correctly. You see, the term bully pulpit does not mean using the pulpit to be a bully, as would seem to apply to Trump. Not at all. The English word bully didn't always mean what it does today. In fact, the original meaning is quite surprising. You see, the word bully didn't always refer to a person who is habitually cruel, insulting, threatening, and who seeks to intimidate others. There was a time when bully meant great or even excellent, and before that, it meant sweetheart or lover, like this quote from John Bale in 1538. Though she be somewhat old, it is my own sweet bully. I grew up hearing confusing phrases like bully for you, bully for me. Why would anyone wish we both had a bully? But the phrase really means great for you and great for me. You might have called someone a bully fellow, or perhaps you had a bully horse. Mark Twain used it this way in Roughing It. The captain said she was a bully boat. By the late 1800s, our new meaning for bully was taking hold, with something more like blusterer in the interim. For a time, both meanings, great or excellent, and the modern meaning were still used. By the way, bully also used to refer to pickled food or canned food such as corned beef. Bully beef in the army meant canned meat rations, but this was because it was rumored to be made from old bulls. Bully also used to refer to a scrimmage in football and in hockey. But what about bully pulpit? Well, today, people often and understandably mistake it to mean lecturing or preaching to people in a bullying way. But the word bully and bully pulpit uses the old meaning. In this way, it's an archaism. It was Theodore Roosevelt who coined the term bully pulpit. When he said the presidency is a bully pulpit, he meant that the presidency was an excellent platform from which to spread his ideas.